Today I'm going to set up a router in my lab environment, so I thought I'd make a short video showing you how I go about doing that. I'm going to be using a set of software called PFSense, which strictly speaking is actually a firewall. But I'm going to be turning off the packet filtering and using it strictly as a router with two interfaces. So I've got a, a diagram here of exactly what I'm going to be doing. I've got a 10.10.10 network. I'm going to be signing a dot one to this interface and a 10.2.2 network and assigning a dot one to the second interface. Now notice the labels here called WAN and LAN. These are the default labels that the PFSense software will give these interfaces as we step through the installation. I also have down here the two websites. Uh, one is pfsense.org and the other is a pfsense.org but mirror downloads old this one here will let you get some of the older versions of software. So let me uh, show you exactly what that website looks like. So the pfsense.org site, uh, you can go to the download link here and get the community edition of the software. And I think as of this video, it's 2.3.2. Or you can go to the ATX files.pfsense.org site and download one of the older versions. Now there are differences in terms of some of the features and also some of the wizards that are used during the installation routine. Uh, I'm going to be using the 2.0.1 and if you, as you follow me through this, uh, once you've seen this you should be able to step through any of the other versions that are out there. Notice that they have a .gz on the extension here so you'll need something like 7-zip to extract the ISO image from this. Now I've already gone ahead and downloaded the ISO image and put it into my ISO library. I'm going to be using the Citrix Zen server for my, for my hypervisor platform. And uh, so what I'm going to do here first is set up a network for my 10.2.2 uh, private network to be used on one of those segments. So notice I only have one here for my storage that I use for my NFS and a 10.10.10 I use for my other network devices. So let's add the private network. So I'm going to select add single server private network. Next, call this uh, a 10.2.2.x and finish. So there's my new network. That's available to my VMs now. So let's go ahead and create our new VM. And the platform this runs on is FreeBSD, which is a Unix variant, which is not available in my drop down here. So I'm going to select Other Install Media. And next, call this a router. And next, and next again, and next again. As far as memory requirements, it's very low. I'm just going to say 512 meg. Select next and add a disk to this. So let's call my disk a router as well. And size wise, let's figure this is going to be 5 gig. That should be fine. Say add and next. And remove the two NICs here and start from scratch. We need the 10.2.2 and the 10.10.10. Select Next, uncheck the Start automatically, and tell it to create. Okay, so after it's created, it should show up in our left-hand window pane, and we'll go to the console screen, and from there, hit the drop-down and select the ISO image. So there's our router now. Let's go to console, hit the drop-down, and select our ISO image. And I mentioned that it's going to be a little older version, a 2.0.1. And once it's mounted, select the power on. So the first set of screens we should see here is a menu that will pop up, which will have a timer on it. We can either let that time out or just hit the enter, which we will do here to speed things up. And as this progresses, we'll, this will come to another prompt to select the letter I to enter the installation mode. We should see that pop up here in another few seconds.
Okay, so there's the eye to place it in installation mode. And now we're in a GUI, so let's accept these settings. Quick and easy install, and then OK. This will take about 30 seconds or so. Okay, we'll leave the default here to symmetric multiprocessing kernel and hit enter. All right, so it says here towards the end of it, it says you may remove the CD from the CD-ROM drive tray and press enter to reboot from the HDD, the hard drive that is. So timing wise, uh, we're going to eject this ISO image during the reboot process. And you can't do it too soon or else we end up with an error. So I'll tell you when I hit the eject. So we're rebooting. Get this ready to eject. I'll hit eject now. So it should start booting up from the hard drive next. So success, it's booting from the hard drive. From this menu, we can let it time out or hit enter. During this phase, we're actually going to enter the IP addresses for those two interfaces. Okay, it's asking us if we want to set up any VLANs. It's, the answer is no. Enter the WAN interface name and we're going to choose the RE0 up here as the WAN interface name. Now it wants the LAN interface name, that's going to be RE1. There's no optional one interface, so we're just going to hit enter. And that looks good, so let's say yes to continue. This will take roughly about 30 seconds or so to time out. The WAN interface, I think, is looking for an IP address to assign to it automatically. So we'll just have to wait for the, <coughs> for the timeout to occur, after which we'll go ahead and select to manually enter one. So from our next menu, I think it's item number two, we select to actually assign the IP addresses. So that would be this here, send interface IP addresses. So we're going to enter two. Choose which one we're going to do first. We're going to select number one, which is the WAN. Now let's configure the WAN interface via DHCP. No. Enter the WAN IP v4 address. That's going to be a 10. 
2.2.1 it wants a subnet bit count is 24 for the web configuration interface it's asking us to fall back to HTTP we'll say yes and enter to continue now let's configure the LAN interface so that would be number 2 to configure the IP address number 2 again for the LAN interface and what's the LAN IPv4 address that is going to be 10.10.10.1 uh, bit count is 24 disable or enable it, we want it disabled so that's N for no and it's telling us that we can now navigate to 10.10.10.1 to get to the GUI to do the rest of the configuration. Enter to continue. Okay, so let's bring up a web browser. And enter 10.10.10.1. Oh, not 143. Let's change that. There we go. So our interface here is asking for a login. The default is admin and password is pfsense. Lowercase. So success, we're in the interface now. So we need to disable the packet filtering at this point. So let's go to system, advanced, firewall NAT, disable all packet filtering. So it converts pfsense into a routing only platform. So select that, scroll down to save it. Changes have been applied successfully. Close. Okay, let's go to our interfaces now. Let's go to WAN. And our WAN interface, scroll down towards the bottom. By default, it's going to block all private IP networks, which we do not want to do, since we're going to be using private IP address ranges on our test network. So uncheck both those boxes and save. And apply changes. Okay, so we should be acting as a router now. So if I read up a, a command prompt from this machine here, I should be able to ping this interface as well as ping this other interface. So let's try that. So ping 10.10.10.1 success and let's ping the 10.2.2.1 interface. Good. Okay, so interfaces are working. Now, just for grins, so I've got enough time here. I'll come over to a test machine I've got here, and I will. Uh, I've got this configured already as a 10.2.2.10 address, but I need to make sure this is on that 10.2.2 network. So let's take a look at the networking configuration of this and properties, and change this network to 10.2.2 say OK. Alright, so now this machine here is actually on that 10.2.2 network here. So let me go over to my local PC again and what I'm going to be doing is from this pinging, we've tested these two interfaces, we're going to ping now this server over here. So let me bring up the command prompt and this time ping that 10.2.2.10 address and I get a reply back. Okay, so my router is functioning and routing traffic appropriately. So there you go, a uh, short little video on installing PFSense and how to configure it as a router in your lab environment. Alright, there you go.